Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 146. This episode is with Jason Page, who you might know best as the singer of the original Pokemon theme song. He was so fun. We talked about him growing up singing, when his love of performing started, his beatboxing, working on jingles, how he came to sing the Pokemon theme song, what that whole process was like. He gives great advice for anyone pursuing success and so much more. So you know what? Let's just jump right into it. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the Interesting Podcast, number 146 with Jason Page. Theme song time. Beautiful, beautiful. Listen to that voice. It's just music naturally. Wow, look at you. Yeah, all the, the voice is music. Everything we say is also rhythmic and melodic. Everything right. we say is also rhythmic and melodic. You're right. Everything. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Get There's it. a guy that I <laughs> just discovered, uh, Ant Tunes. Oh. And yeah. he takes some of these radical speeches that people are giving where they're yelling, like the Karen's yelling yeah. or <laughs> the preacher, and he he lays it into a music track and then he oh. he times out exactly where the voice lands and relatively where the pitch lands. Sure. And then he plays heavy metal music oh. underneath of it. It's absolutely incredible. Yes. Ant tunes. Ant tunes. Ant tunes. I love that. Amazing, amazing. I- I've I've seen a similar thing where a guy does a uh, on piano. He matches the pitch of the person talking and does it as if it's like with the music. <laughs> music, speech is music. Music is everywhere. Tones are everywhere. The vibrations of the universe are yeah. always happening. It's beautiful. Outside, the refrigerator's going. Yeah. The water's there. going. Everything is just it's everything. Music. Just living in music. I love it. I love it. Music everywhere. That's right. I'm so in. So what do you so what do you do? So do tell me about your interesting podcast. Uh well, it's a show where I talk to interesting people. The end. <laughs> Are we on yet? Are we on yet? Yeah, this this will all be edited later on. Oh, okay. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna take out all my gaffes and right. No, I'm leaving them in, fumbles. dude. I'm gonna make my own. Oh, okay, please. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. Feel free to manipulate my voice to say whatever you want me to say. That's right. I have a list, actually, if you could just repeat after me. Um, they're all offensive, but I think we can get through them together. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. The AI that does it, too. It's a, it's a show that I just, uh, you know, I just find people who I find interesting, and then I just get to know them better. I just, I like people. I like people a lot, you know? Cool. You- can can you tell me what is your what is your viewership because there's there's no numbers on some of those uh sure some of the sure so the most recent numbers I got was uh currently just over twenty two thousand woo total I I mean it makes no sense to me I don't know how <laughs> and and that's just and that's all your all your uh platforms I, combined I think so I think so I'm terrible wow, at great. tech so I'm like maybe you know <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's great. I listened to a few a few minutes of some of your, your oh, cool. people and it sound it sounded good. And so I was like, Thank all right, you. this is this is dude. This is good. This is good. Let's do it. That's right. Dude, I appreciate it. Cause you know, you didn't have to. <laughs> and uh, you, you know, know, uh this is how we this is how we fight the the powers that be by yeah. having these interactions. This is how we we expand. This is how we connect we make the best of a bad situation. Yeah. And I agree. Form inroads to making making a better world, basically. I agree, and uh, I I think human connection is very important. I think that's something that has like kind of got to the forefront, especially with the pandemic and everything, and people having to be separated. It's like, oh right, interaction is like essential to existence, almost. You know, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yes, yes, yes. We die. Babies die if you don't pick them up and touch them. They yeah, just die. Isn't that, isn't you that could crazy? feed them. You could water, you could give them food and nutrition. They will die without human contact. Yeah. Fucked up. 
Really it's nuts, up. man. That's what are we then, are we PG? Can I say fucked up? You can say whatever you want. Right, get com- let's get good. comfortable. You all know? right. All right. Let's get all right, I, I have the most comfortable couch behind me. You know, we got you gotta get you're in a hoodie that looks awesome. I you see, know? I see. So we're winning. It's the JP, the new JP hoodie. I love it. I love it. It's so, actually an old JP hoodie. It's an experiment, but it's it's a it's a vintage. You and know? I got a little cartoon character of myself. Look at that. I love it. Somebody love put it. me in a in a video game. And then somebody yeah. played that video game and saw the little character what? and made and knitted a hat. How cool it's, is that? It's bizarre how how that with few stitches yeah. can actually identify me with very little detail. We're how we're all very cool. complicated and also very simple at the same time. I agree. That's the beauty of humanity, I find. I like yes. it. I, yes. I love how you see the world. That music is everywhere. I think that's so cool. Uh, what would it be? Absolutely. He came out of the womb and went. (laughs) (laughs) And they just, your parents just took a microphone in front of you and started playing background. There we go. (laughs) It's an E. (laughs) (laughs) Babies. They've got the pitch, the tone. They know. They They have no insecurities. Right. The the frequency. I think there must be some innate, like if we studied, and this would be an interesting thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Study the pitches and the actual tones of babies and what the sounds that they make and like being able to to go, oh, that baby was a 449 and yeah. then that baby said 440. This baby actually had to shit and this yeah. baby was hungry. <laughs> like there's, yeah, there's a language have like a that, meter, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's how animals communicate. They have a very that's specific true. sound that they make and it all sounds the same, but they're actually giving each other very very specific signals across great distances yeah. with their cause and their hoots and their out we got to figure you know. this out jason this is our invention it's a it's a frequency based baby monitor boom frequency takes, based baby monitor that's right and then dude, you just <laughs> <laughs> takes the guesswork out of parenthood you know <laughs> i'll split I'll, you know what I'll, I'll split it with you we'll patent it we'll Deal. split it it's it. it's on it, now it, i think it, this is binding you know <laughs> that's right that's right baby translator baby translator that's, that's right that's right and then you can do the voices you know, it'll be and like you can do the one for the dogs too. You you know one for your dogs, and then you got one for your done. wife as well. Actually, Perfect. I saw that on yeah. Key and Peel. <laughs> Key and Peel already has the uh, the girlfriend interpreter. Oh yeah, that's true. But, hmm. but yeah, on a, on a very on a very scientific level, a physical level, yeah. we are vibrations. We give each other vibrations, and yep. on a tiny little speaker of an old ratty old phone, yeah. I could recognize my grandmother's voice yeah you could recognize any voice in the entire planet yeah through a tiny little speaker it's it doesn't even embody it doesn't even require that you're in the room you can do it it's, it's amazing true. amazing human technology human i agree technology is is the the most advanced technology i agree i agree it's so cool did, so wait did you so grow you have up? a list of did i grow up singing yeah do i have a list Sing, of things uh, nope i don't well <laughs> Uh, be, yeah, the list of things. Besides that, that actual question right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I mean, I I think I grew up first with the with the scream, which was a sing. That's a good start. Singing as I came out on pitch, and then I learned how to speak through learning my ABCs, which was a song. Ah, uh, that makes a, sense. B C D E F G. I mean, I guess you, I know this you one. Learn, learn to say the words right. I yeah. imagine the publishing on that song. Yeah. <laughs> can you we almost can say as happy good birthday. as the publishing on Happy Birthday? Yeah, <laughs> third only to the publishing on the Pokemon theme song. Boom, Look which I don't own any of. That's not me. <laughs> Sorry, unfortunately. Yeah. Right, that's, right. Uh, those people have more money than Bill Gates. I think yeah. at this point. For sure, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> so yeah, I grew up. I grew up uh, ABC song, and then all of the the, the relative childhood uh, nursery rhymes and sure. songs that you sing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a couple of periods of chorus in grade school. Okay. Uh, okay. And then uh, then uh, we got into the high school range. Uh-huh. And, and I was living in Queens at the time. I don't know cool. if you're, you're familiar. Rockaway. Rockaway. Yeah. I was living out in Far Rock. Oh, right on. Cool, cool. Uh, and the schools out there were very restrictive. It was not the best place. So I auditioned for the school's. And applied for the schools in the other boroughs, and I got accepted to music and art high school, oh, cool. which is the the fame I want to live forever. Yeah, I want to learn how to fly. Hey, mm-hmm. 
which yeah. uh, TV the TV show attracted many people in New York City sure. to that to that to audition for that school, and I uh, I got in as a voice major. Cool. And uh, and that's when my singing really got squelched by the yeah. educational institution that yeah. wanted to direct <laughs> my creativity into a very limited classical 12 sure. tone uh eastern european scale right like for instance, that's that's when, when everybody says you know it's music theory it should be called music theory based on early uh, late 18th century <laughs> eastern european classical theory sure. that's what we are existing in right now hundreds right. of years old structure that all of the schools teach and this particular yeah. school taught it with a with a, a ruler that you get smacked sure. if you didn't <laughs> think the right notes. Miss X would smack the ruler and she I think she might have smacked me once with that ruler. I'm not sure. Right. She definitely was very much against me when I went out of the twelve tone scale or I sure. didn't follow the classical rules or pronounce the words well. So sure. that sort of restriction gave me a little bit of the structure to mm -hmm. basically break free of once I got out of school. I mean, literally at sure. 3 p.m. when I got out of school, yeah. <laughs> I would hang out with my friends and yeah. we would rock out to, uh, you know, Mr. Crowley and Ozzy yeah. Osbourne and Iron Maiden and Get it. and the heavy metal bands of the of the mid 80s. Sure. And that that led me to my own my own imitate all of those guys and be my own sort of yeah. singer. And Hell not yeah. the singer that my school wanted me to be singing. Right. Oh. You know, look at that. Like, that. That's not me. That's not me. But <laughs> I love that it sounds so, yeah, beautiful. So and you're like, nah. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's there's beauty to it. However, it, it I, I think the beauty is ultimately in the intention. Sure. And my intention was not to right. exemplify the lyrics that the composer wrote about how beautiful th are thy, how sure. sweet and whatever the German lyrics are. My intention was to pass the class right. and, to, <laughs> and, to, and to get the hell out of there and go jam with create. my band yeah and create and sing some rush songs my name sure. warrior yeah. me me right today's time to soil me me dry yeah get it so you grew up did you like when did you realize you could beatbox because that's a totally different skill yeah i mean dude beatboxing was the was the the language of the band rehearsal Yo, 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 play. You play. And you play. And you go. Right. So we would tell each other what to do in band rehearsal. And that was, you know, the beatbox then was. Right. And now if you hear the beatboxers, they are. I mean. Epic levels of yeah. Yeah. doing shit that I, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, like... What and they're ten years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't do the in That's I'm pretty watching them and trying to learn. And I'm I used to be the only guy that could do beatbox sure. I, I beatbox with aerosmith i beatbox yeah on every every session i've ever done i always do a little oh, beatboxing so cool. while I'm hanging out and they're like oh you gotta do that you gotta do that yeah so many of many of the gigs involve a little bit of beatbox in there and yeah. for for most of my adult life until the past 10 years five ten years five mm -hmm. years actually i've been the best beatboxer i know <laughs> and now I'm on the tenth. I was the top floor of a ten-story building. Sure. <laughs> now I'm on the tenth floor. Uh, maybe I'm on the fifteenth floor of a hundred-story building <laughs> that that is built by ten to twenty-year-olds yeah. that are beatboxing their heads off, creating sounds and language that is so incredible and it's because yeah. of you know because of the internet and all the sharing of things all i knew was yeah uh you know fat boys and these old rap groups that used to beatbox a little bit yeah so, yeah that was my that was my beatboxing uh 
Yeah, That's so cool. With Aerosmith on stage and yeah, yeah. And I have Michael I still Jackson. Think that I Michael Jackson. I'm, I'm aware I didn't of your beatbox stuff. with Michael Jackson. I didn't beatbox with him. Oh, but 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 I, I did sing and sing and, and rap with him. However, I still claim to have the loudest snare drum yeah. out of any beatboxer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm maybe I'm see I'm going red. I'm I'm distorting the mic. Get uh get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, a very loud so cool. it's a very loud beatbox that's so cool though dude so so oh, then yeah. wait if you so if you're going to school for music right and then there's that whole thing like i imagine it's kind of like a jazz musician that goes to like a classical school you're like all right cool but like i, I want to go and like finagle this thing so you had that sort of like you know explosive creative energy you know so like at what point well, you said you wanted to be like a singer a performer um, well, there was the performance aspect of my first day of school. Mm -hmm. uh, my audition was a was a, a shaky, nervous mess months <laughs> before I actually went to school. Mm -hmm. I, I sang uh, the, the keto. Oh. I'm sailing away. Hey. Right. Uh, yeah. Set an open cars for the virgin sea Cause I've got to be free I still sound like I'm 13 <laughs> Free to face the life that's ahead of me So I, I got up And I was the first person in the first day of school To sing for the class Get it He said, he said uh, He said, everybody stand up And everybody stood up and then he said, everybody sit down except for you. Oh. <laughs> and then I, I was standing up and he said, all right, we're going we're gonna to sing what we sang for our auditions for the class. Mm -hmm. And I sang my Come Sail Away. And the, the class went crazy. They, they freaked out. And it was like the first public performance besides my audition, which wasn't a performance. That was, that was like a... a trial by fire was a terrifying <laughs> first time singing for anybody besides in my house for my my, my mother sure uh, uh, my father is a saxophone player my oh, cool. grandfather is a drummer and up until this point i had only seen them play a couple of times so i didn't grow up with them being right. the rock stars that they actually were i saw sure. very little of it uh, but i did that that first day of school performance and it was incredible adrenaline of course from yeah. that point on, I didn't sing anything that I wanted to sing until the band <laughs> outside of school performed at the first talent show. Oh, perfect. Excuse me. And, and the drummers, the drummer went to a junior high school. So it was like a younger school. And we sang our four song set, Hungry Like the Wolf. Beautiful. Duck in the forest, night is a wire, seen in the subway, earth is a fire. Oh, get it. <laughs> we sang, you're not shy, you get around, oh, you want to fly, you want your feet on the ground, you stay up, you won't come down, you want to live, you want to move to the sound, you get fire Ooh. in your vein. You remember that song? Oh, yeah. Dude, 80s music is my favorite. So urgent, music. urgent, wait and see. What was the one other song we sang? Oh, <gasps> what oh. happened here? Oh. As a New York sunset disappeared, I found an empty garden among the flagstones there. Who lived there? Oh, I'm gonna sing that yeah. one in my new series. I can't. I can't believe I, I haven't. I haven't done that one. You on should. The yet. You still got I it. I haven't. I have a series uh, on my YouTube channel called Singing in the Streets. Yep, I love it. I started I love it. during the pandemic mm -hmm. just to just to be out there spreading love on and joy on the streets. Yeah. Like uh, the cold and, uh, and I and I keep thinking, oh, there's so many songs I could sing. I could just do one every day for the rest of my life and not run out of songs. Yeah. Um, but those are two that I'm gonna I'm gonna rock in the in the near future. Good. Empty Garden and. Yeah, hungry like the wolf. You should, cause you're killing it. Still, look at it, and you still remember the set. Well done, well done. Yeah, so that was my first uh, addiction to the to the the thrill of performing. I had such adrenaline. I remember running through the the halls of that school uh, on East Ninety Sixth Street and Third Avenue, and just like it, it was the most high I had ever been as a human being. 
And sure. That was uh, that's still something I've been chasing that high sure. since that day, and and have only come close to it uh, a, a couple of times. I mean, there's some there were some major major highs. Uh, obviously, Michael Jackson is a super high, but I was a background singer, so sure. Everybody was the equally high from that event. Mm -hmm. uh, one of one of the potentially competing highs was New Year's Eve Rocky Horror Picture Show at Ooh. Rockwell Table and Stage in Los Angeles, where I played Frankenfurter and led the Dude. countdown at New Year's Eve. I don't know if you're familiar with Rocky Horror, but it's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That was a uh, um, Tim Allen's character. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, not Tim, Tim Allen. Curry, Tim, Tim Curry. Curry. Tim Curry. Cool. Can yeah. you imagine if Tim, Tim Allen did it? <laughs> <laughs> very different show. <laughs> yeah, very different show. Very different show. <laughs> it was one of those albums that my mom had when I was a kid, and when I was asked to do it at Rock at at uh, Rockwell after having performed there for numbers of years, mm -hmm. it was the culmination of my community, my my one of the greatest musicals ever written. Uh, and uh, and uh, just an, an incredible time to do it on New Year's Eve because everybody yeah. wants something really special to happen at New Year's Eve. And True. What better way than to fr have Frankenfurter spank down the 30, I mean, hey. last 30 seconds <laughs> as we bring in the New Year. So I did it for three years in a row there, and no they were all incredible experiences. That's so cool. You said your dad and your grandpa were musicians. Was your mom? Which Did she sing? No, my mother, my mother still has a little bit of trouble singing unless it's just in a group. Everybody sings the same note. Sure. She tends to jump to a harmony. That's not the harmony. Right. But right. she's very artistic. She's very artistic. Oh, cool. Uh, and she was she was she's uh, she's acted as well. And she's oh, right a great on. artist. So she can actually draw things, see things and recreate them with her right. hand very well. Extremely creative person. That's cool. So if did you grow did you grow up then in New York and then you said you performed in L.A. When did you make the jump across country? Um, well, my my uh, my adulthood has been spent in New York. Until I got to New York, mm -hmm. I was a uh, I I was born in Texas. Okay, okay. Then I moved to I moved to moved to Baltimore for for first to fifth grade. Oh, where I went to two separate schools. And then mm -hmm. I moved to Florida, fifth and sixth grade, two separate schools as Florida what? divides what part of Florida? middle school. Uh, Hallandale, Florida, right outside of Miami. Yeah, I'm in Naples. Oh, cool. Right on the other coast from Miami, but same yes, yes. latitude, uh, longitude. I was thinking, just just uh, questioning, heading down to Florida, and I didn't want to go to Miami, but I really wanted to get some tropical time in, and I was thinking going to the West Coast. Hey, if you do, I'll buy you lunch. That was a spot. That was a spot. After Florida, I came to New York, which started me in Brooklyn, sixth grade, Brooklyn, cool. another school, seventh grade. Then I moved to Queens for eighth grade and then finally Manhattan for ninth grade throughout uh, the, the next 20 something years till I oh. moved to L.A. OK, as as I had been going back and forth to L.A. for jobs and, and, and sure. various gigs and things. Uh, in 2004, I headed out there with my girlfriend of the time and mm -hmm. we pretty much stayed and I well and I've been back and forth to New York periodically uh, I still keep my apartment in New York which I am at right now I mean sure. in my building in New York uh but uh I've been in LA for 15 16 years now back or back and forth from LA to New York for 16 years sure uh and and uh consider myself fully fully by coastal and I'm trying to remove myself from both coasts and find a more like a central hub. More cent not only centralized, I just a more amicable, more socially uh, satisfying, more naturally appealing sure. environment. And I don't know where that is. Maybe it's in Florida. What do you, what's Naples got going on? Uh nothing. A bunch of old people. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, they there's a saying down here. It's uh, Naples is home of the newly wed and the nearly dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> The average median age is, I want to say, in the late fifties, probably. We can. There's bowling, which is kind of cool, you know. Sure. <laughs> For you know, one time. Uh, you know what? There is a place in Benita, which is like fifteen minutes north of Naples. There's a zoo type place, but not really a zoo, where you can hand feed flamingos. 
that's pretty cool. Okay. All right. right. I like that a lot. <laughs> the topography is much the same as the as the East Coast, yeah? yeah it's all, yeah, it's just flat. Yeah, flat, just, humid, just Everglades. Flat. Yeah, yep. yeah. You got to swim through the air down here. Right. Yep. Yes, I, I remember <laughs> it well. I remember it well. It was, it was not very pleasant unless you were right at the water. Uh-huh, 100%. And there were no man of war. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> true. <laughs> Yeah, been there, oh, yeah. been there. So was 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 because you did singing, you did acting. Was it any performing you were kind of going for, or did you have like a I want to be this? Um, I want to be the very best. Right, uh, right. Like that segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 performance of voice led to some musical theater, which in school there was there. But by my senior year, I was able to do some some uh, you know, non classical things one sure. or two classes i had a musical theater class where i did follies in as our senior show which is a, a an acting challenge so you got to see that music isn't just about music that music is about telling stories which right. is acting and yep. it's and and it's actually more about acting than it even is about music sure uh in most cases or or the cases that i more uh, appreciate where people are communicating something very important not just hitting notes and saying words Right. And uh, and actually, I I still have had very limited experience acting without any musical elements. In, in sure. other words, there's always a song or singing of some sort that I have to do. I, I've only done one straight play that didn't have music, and I played a dog that had no dialogue. <laughs> the whole time, I was just this dog on stage pretending to be a dog. It was an amazing challenge because <laughs> yeah, it required a lot of focus and a lot of acting. I bet. Uh, with some incredible actors. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're just kind of one and the same, really. They, yeah, to me, they're so. one and the same. And I'm just communicating something. I'm, I'm, I'm convincing you of something. I right. have to get you to believe something. Right. And whether I'm doing it with notes or just doing it with words and character, it's the same goal exists or I'm trying to entertain you or I'm trying right. to take you away or inform you of something. So sure. So any way that you were entertaining an audience, that's, that was the jam. This is the same thing right here. Yeah, it's, I, I agree. Know, we're acting, we're talking, we're communicating things. We're making our case. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if you want to break it down, we're doing it with rhythm and pitch. That's true. Well. That's true. I'm CGI. I'm not even a person. Right. You're, you're deep fake. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, CGI, yeah. Do you, so when you're when you're growing up doing like music and really fun stuff with your friends and you're in these bands, when you start doing it like professionally, like you start getting gigs, when you got your first gig, was it different than you expected? Um I I think the first gig, I kind of can't remember what the first gig was. Somebody we knew had a jazz band. His name is John Hammond, and he played he plays organ, still plays organ all around the world. Uh, That's cool. He asked me to sing something, a session for him. Was, he was paying me to sing on the session, and it was interesting. But I, because it was somebody else's thing that I was getting paid for to do, and it wasn't, and it was singing. Obviously, I, I, before that, I had had managers, and I had done some commercials and acted in things, but they weren't musical. Right. Uh, I, I like I did a, uh, a I did a I did Junior Star Search in 1986. Oh, there you go. And a couple of TV commercials that I just was acting in. Cool. Um, but there wasn't much acting to do in that. But it in this one session, I remember singing this song and being able to to do my own thing on somebody else's thing, and it was very interesting because I had to I had to take direction and listen, and I was getting paid. A at the same time, my band was also playing out, and that was considered professional because we would get sure. paid part of the door or some you know fee totally. for, for doing the gigs uh but it didn't really start to become a real professional pursuit until the band uh the singing for money specifically until the band broke up sure the band the band wasn't singing for money that was changing the world yeah with my music Totally. And money just happened to be a byproduct of it if we could make it. That wasn't right. it wasn't employment, it was art. Mm -hmm. And when I got when the band broke up, I got into doing jingles. And that oh, was nice. singing for money, manipulating my voice for the purpose of the product. Right. To communicate once again, but to communicate what that product wanted for that fee that they were offering me and the residuals that it could possibly bring. Absolutely. In the future from 
all right there. get it right there so yeah it's an interesting thing it, it changes the way that you the way that you express yourself when you're expressing with a dollar price behind it and totally. a producer that has an expectation as mm -hmm. opposed to the free roaming I improvisation or your own work that you can do as an artist there's and, and the trick is to take that money and sound like you really mean it yeah and and re and actually yeah. really mean it so sure so that's kind of where where th the magic happens you hire this guy to do exactly what you want to say and and he's got to make everybody believe that he's really doing it mm -hmm. and that's it's it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting challenge because if I don't believe in something or I think somebody has uh, nefarious intentions or the product isn't right, it's harder for me to commit to the to the sale of it while sure. I'm performing it. I'll just be like, ah, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah, <laughs> dude wants me to do his project and it's awful. I don't believe in what he's doing, and then I'm like, um, and, and I try to I. Try not to do that as often as often as possible, but every now and then, there's a very very stark difference when you get in there and you're like, "Wow, this is this is not what I thought thought it was." Yeah, I I always wonder with like creative artists and stuff because like a dream job is still a job, right? So it's like you can have right. this idea of what it's going to be, but when it's a job, a lot of times it's different than a lot of people expected on the road to it. Yes, you have to be a partner in the product and, and, and the oh, producer. Cool. You have to be a partner of the producer to really believe in it, what it is you're doing. A lot of times after I do a session, I'll go out and I'll buy that product and just commit karmically sure. <laughs> to have the product and, and, uh, and see what it brings. Sure. Uh, strangely, on that note, I, I, I did the Pokemon theme and I didn't buy any Pokemon, which I yeah. so should have <laughs> gone right out and bought a if pack of those known. cards. Just one pack of cards. That's all you would have needed. <laughs> uh, but you know, but later on, as I understood the ecosystem and, and really started diving into the lyrics because it was a job at first that I really committed to and really converted into the belief and the sound of my voice yeah. and, and, you know, to sell this idea mm -hmm. that are embedded in the lyrics that are all great lyrics, except, mm -hmm. you know, we just didn't know what really Pokemon were at the time, right. but we know what every, everything else about that song is incredibly impactful, powerful, positive, and Absolutely. I can get behind everything in it. And then of course, now I understand I can actually get behind Pokemon because they actually represent all yeah. of the other lyrics in the song. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's one of the products that I wish I would, have karmically yeah. <laughs> supported <laughs> the day after I did sure. that session. How did that come to be? How did you end up get that gig? Because it's um, a Japanese show that moved here. Yeah. Well, the Japanese, uh, sh when they moved it here, they gave it to four kids for distribution. That was the company right. that was going to distribute it. They redub it and they create a new theme song for it. Mm -hmm. They hire a jingle house. That oh. at the time, after having done many jingles for many different jingle houses, I get called in based on what they know I can do. And as a sure. chameleon, I can do a lot of different voices. They know I can sound 14 and rock out. So yeah. they wanted somebody. They, so that was probably in their brief that it's kind of this character that's supposed to sound like a young rock kid. Cool. And uh, so I went in to do the do the session for the company that I already had a relationship with because I did Domino's Pizza Delivers and some oh, other love it. jingles for that for that company. Uh, and they, you know, they wrote the song based on the brief that they got, and we discussed it and what it kind of should sound like. And we looked at the the video of the Japanese show, and we were like, okay, looks kind of like Speed Racer, which is a big yeah big, big show. I loved Speed Racer. So as a good. Kid. Uh, and, uh, that was it. Just hit it, hit it and see what they like, see if they like it. And mm -hmm. they liked it. They needed to change a lyric here and there and, uh, revised it. And then eventually got to gotta catch them all was the one that they, they chose. Yeah. And, uh, then it went on the, on the TV show. The TV show actually got good response. Yeah. And they decided because of such a great response from the TV show. And of course the product launch and all of the, Totally. Hubbub around it, they would make a record of songs inspired by the TV show. Mm -hmm. And they did a whole 
album of To Be a Master and an extended version of the theme song, which was the the signature song of that album. That was a number one album. Yeah. It was played on Radio Disney record amount of times. And, yeah. You know, all of the all of the billboard charting and all of that stuff happened to it. But it all comes from the jingle world ultimately. The music oh, cool. houses that create corporate music for companies that are selling their products or promoting their you know right. their events. That's so cool. What a like in the grand scheme of things to think about that, you wouldn't see that path as clearly, you know? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. The Pokemon the Pokemon ecosystem is filled with independent creators uh that are that are outside of the pokemon's control They're, most of what you see of pokemon are created by just people that love it and want to do their own thing and then they license some of the properties to make their own right. pikachu dolls or to make their own pokemon cups or to make their own costumes or to make their own even tops license to make the cards like sure everybody uh, legendary pictures makes it take a pikachu pokemon yeah. is a giant ip that licenses out to so many people and that's where the creativity really right. happens uh, there's musical you know pokemon channels and there's music people yeah. making and uh, there's just so many things that people have done taken into their own hands to do creatively inspired by the product but in the very beginning it's all a uh, it's all a paid it's all sure. a paid production, you know? Right. Now they could probably find a thousand different original Pokemon songs that people would gladly <laughs> submit to be the new well, new Pokemon theme. I've even done two of my own original Pokemon songs just for fans. They're great. Because of uh, enthusiasm, having nothing to do with Pokemon, completely mm -hmm. unofficial, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and gr received great value and given great value to the ecosystem. From from that, I mean, it, you sure. Know, the po my Pokemon Go theme, and I did a Detective yep. Pikachu theme as well. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, I remember. So hats off to the Pokemon ecosystem that continues to to create amazing things all over the place. Yeah. H how long did it take you to like realize how big of a deal it was? Because if you're going in like you you've been doing jingles, and they're like, "Hey, we got you for this gig," and then you're like, "Oh, oh." <laughs> um. At the time, we were deep into the third or fourth year of Lego Mania. Lego oh yeah, Mania. right. So Lego Mania was huge, and every time I turned on the TV, there was a Lego Mania commercial with Lego Mania. Yeah. Even if they didn't <laughs> do like, the whole song, hey. <laughs> it was a full song. But that that little clip was in a, was in tons of commercials, so I knew that my voice had been spread. Far and wide, far and wide. Oh, <laughs> I'm seeing it. Each Lego set to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any one of these things could be a giant, a giant situation. So, I'm always going in to every session, trying to go for the grand slam, mm -hmm. giving it my all because I can, I see how, how much effect it has had uh, from other sessions that I've done, and that, and that was. I started doing jingles in about 1995, and this is 98. So three years of 100 plus sessions a year, maybe more, two to three sessions a week. Ooh. So I have do already done six or 700 sessions. Wow. 50, 50, you know, 200, 300. Yeah, I've been, I've been done. I had done hundreds of sessions at this point. Sure. Seven, whatever. That's uh, nuts. And you never know what what each one is going to be. So sure. that was uh, the Grand Slam w was was recognized when it was on products everywhere. The little theme song would play out of a Pikachu that was being sold in Blockbuster Video. When you walk oh, in, oh yeah, the the motion sensor would see you and it would go Pikachu, and then you walk by it again, it would go Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. <laughs> and then the, so there were, they'd have these things in Blockbuster and there was like a dozens of them in the front of the store. So you would just get blasted with the theme. <laughs> You're every surrounded time you by your in. own voice. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, this is this is just out of control. And uh, I, I can't believe how huge this thing is. And, and right. nobody knows it's me. And yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not getting paid for this Pikachu here. 
Right. It's crazy. Right. Uh, what am I going to do about it? How can I? Sure. How can I figure this out? <laughs> that, that's a funny existence that I feel like not a lot of people have that experience where you're surrounded by your own voice in so many things because it's so, you know, everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, we have to. We have to really be comfortable with ourselves in order to be <laughs> successful. And we have to really love ourselves. It's a form of self-love. Sure. <laughs> <in a way. laughs> Maybe I loved myself so much that I manifested the world just blasting me at me. That's right, yeah. <laughs> as much as possible. No, you no. Have to I reap, imagine you have to reap what you sow now. <laughs> but yeah. in my case, I'm not, I'm not recognized for it. It's just an anonymous thing That's a that good point. I'm serving the product and sure they're not blasting me nobody knows it's me that's being blasted at me right until now until the past few years sure. when i've actually made an effort to introduce myself to those who who may have already known heard me sure that i'm actually a human being not just this thing that occupies their imagination and their past right yeah you know <laughs> like the like the singer of here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. It's true. I don't know that guy. Where's nope. that guy? I'll find him. I want that guy's I'll autograph. Him, I'll get him get on him the on, show. Get That's him what on I'll the show. do. <laughs> this is the service I provide, Jason. <laughs> that <laughs> like, would be interesting. Yeah. It's like, you definitely, know, definitely. The, I, I used to joke that like my, my show, what I would do is I'm like, you know that person that you love? Well, here's them. Like, you don't right. know that you love them, but you do love them. And here you go. That's so. That, I, that's exactly it. I, I've tuned into quite a few of your live streams and they're super fun. And uh, I'm wondering when, when, so you grew up singing. Did you grow up playing instruments as well? Because you're really good at guitar. Um, guitar happened uh, as an extension of the bait. Oh, you know, my first instrument was the Casio VL tone. It was oh, a yeah? guy this big. The, it was 13 keyboard? inches. It had a little keyboard and had a. Yeah. <laughs> That little beat had five little beats you could do and five little instruments you could do. And I remember playing little songs on that. Then my band uh, brought me to the bass because there was nobody playing bass. Cool. And already one of my friends was the guitar player and his brother was the keyboard player. We had a drummer. So I went down yeah, to really? Pawn Shop on 56th Street and 8th Avenue, bought a bass, began playing the bass. And then that led to guitar. And... Uh, the keyboard really started to expand once I had to figure stuff out in college. I needed, I studied jazz voice at NYU oh, and cool. I needed to figure out the chords to teach myself the jazz songs. So I started learning, you know, more complicated piano chords and stuff. And, uh, and also that, that translated to guitar. So, and drums are a natural extension of being in rehearsal and wanting to jam out after the drummer left because <laughs> yeah. he was having so much fun. <laughs> you wanted to get over there and bang those drums too. So you learn sure. all the instruments when you're in there. If you have a drummer that doesn't tell you, yo, man, get off my drums. Right, yeah. <laughs> which which I, we had a drummer like that <laughs> for yeah. a while. <laughs> no, man, don't touch, I told you, don't touch my drums. Right. Dude, you're, <laughs> why? They're beating on them, banging them. You no, man, I just don't let anybody touch my drums. <laughs> that's yeah that's, that's my instruments and and it's just the interest in music you know you sure you pick up other instruments uh my dad played saxophone so i am able to sort of figure that out a little bit sure Said that a little bit and and anything that is an instrument i will try to play Get <laughs> at it. least for the fun of it i just found out what a, a jaw harp was like a mm. month ago, I was like, what is this? Immediately bought one. Yeah. They're so cool. That's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like that, yeah. Yeah, they're so cool. I was like, what is yeah, this little weird instrument? I like it. Yeah, but, it's also, you can hold it, it's a roach clip. You can smoke weed joints with it. You put a little. Oh, that's so there. smart. You're right. That's what I thought <laughs> it was when I first saw one of those. It's a, it holds a lot of things. You know, you can do whatever you need. It's multi-purpose. Yeah. Multi-purpose, a multi-tool. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> have, have you oh, ever walked into, uh, like, people doing karaoke to the Pokemon theme song? Because I find it's pretty popular. Yes. Uh, there was a, there was a, I was doing, uh, a, the only Pokemon-related tour that I've done was with uh, a, group called vgl video games live they play video oh, yeah. game music all across the the world the under 
score of your favorite video games with a giant orchestra yeah. and the video screen of the game and graphics from the game. Anyway, after that gig, I, I came out as the encore and sang the Pokemon theme song. Oh, cool. And after that, at one of the bars in the area, there was a dude who had been at the show, and when he saw me came in, come in, he ran to the karaoke machine and, and signed himself up for, for the Pokemon theme song. And then he started doing the theme song and announced that I was there. And then, you know, people pushed me up to go sing with him. Yeah. And the dude was horrible. It was, it was <laughs> oh, so <no>. bad. <laughs> and I was like trying to sing, like I was trying to sing with him and he wouldn't, he wouldn't even let me sing. He was like, <laughs> he was, he was hogging the mic and I'm like, I just want you here. <laughs> I'm singing with you here. You're gonna let me fucking sing with you? It's really funny. <laughs> but yeah, it's, part a, of this. <laughs> it's a very hard song to sing. Uh, when you're yeah. in the sessions, you're you're punching in. You don't have to sing it all the way through. There's I've never had to perform oh. a song in a session. You don't go all the way through. Almost almost I never. Didn't know that really? You, know, you go piece piece at a time. And oh. um, and of course this this song we only had the first verse. To right. do anyway. So, <laughs> if anything, I only sang the first verse and the first chorus. Uh, so when I when it came time to actually perform the song live, which I think the first time was uh, at Comic Con in 2016, Stan Lee's Los Angeles Comic Con. Right. I got asked to 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 come there and be part of the finale party where one of the, the band that was playing uh, flux capacitor played all great of these name. incredible things yeah they're great they're, they, they all dress as back to future guys oh, and sweet. they play all the great songs from that that era um and i had to rehearse with them and i went down to rehearse and it was and it was the first time i actually had to sing the song all the way through i was like this is a this is a hard song to sing <laughs> this is this, this is, is a lot i'm gonna have to work <laughs> this technique out so that I can get through this and make sure I hit it right. Cause these people have high expectations. <laughs> if I come out now, I can't sing the song. They're going to be, this is going to be great disappointment. The embarrassment of sure. your own childhood. I'm yeah. embarrassed. <laughs> my, ch ah, my childhood is ruined. Actually, I did get many comments like that. I did re-sing it, but not live oh. uh, for some YouTube videos. Uh, sure. You might know about the Ron Paul. Oh yeah. 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 Pokemon theme sure. it was the first time I I actually used the song and, and tried to do it again in any capacity. Sure. Uh, and there were comments that were you know devastating comments that people left like you just destroyed my childhood. I can't believe he's doing this. <laughs> my whole childhood wrecked, just cracked in yeah. my childhood. <laughs> Things like that. Oh, of people. course, most of the comments were positive, but right, right. But yeah, if I were to come out and not be able to sing this this song. Sure. It, it, it would have been it would have been very uh very very bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. you'd you'd have to come up with some sort of excuse. Like walk away with like your back twisted up, be like, oh, sorry, I oh, did something. I <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, or just bring it, put it in another key, which you yeah. know I like to change I like to change it up and do it in different ways, but uh Sure. You know, that that VGL was a very charged experience. I bet um and karaoke is also a very charged experience. So. Yeah, yeah. Have you done that, it at karaoke? I've done, done it. Do it? I've done it once in my life. I am a terrible singer. Um, I I am much better on like you know an instrument, uh, and things like that. And uh, you know, once was enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, okay. But I always have that like idea of like when I go to karaoke or I see people doing it, everyone that goes up. I always think about like in the movies, you know, when it's like, oh, it's just another person. But then every now and then it's Lady Gaga, you know, with like, right, <laughs> like right. <laughs> not them, but like somebody that's really, really good, you know? Yeah. 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 I yeah. Uh, when I appear in public and sing and, and reveal that I'm the Pokemon theme singer, whether it be by singing the song or just telling people. Sure. They don't believe me. So. Really? <laughs> I can walk up to somebody and go, gotta catch them all, Pokemon. And they'll be like, yeah, that was really good, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, good impression. That's really good. And I'll be like, yeah, that, <laughs> I, that's me. I sang that song. And then they'll be like, yeah, yeah, I, I just heard you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I sang the actual original song. That's my voice. You yeah, sure? right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's no way. And I'll, I have to go to the YouTube and 
right the videos like, to people they will not they on. don't believe it they don't believe it so <laughs> and i can understand because this is something that just exists in their imagination sure and their and their memory it doesn't exist as an artist out there playing that they That's would true. know about That's which true. is uh, given it the opportunity to blossom in their in their minds like what what if i mean even uh, greatest case michael jackson sang the pokemon theme song right and then michael jackson came out with a video where he was dancing and singing the pokemon theme song it would take you away from the show and the sure. ecosystem that's built off of the enthusiasm people have they right. would just be thinking oh it's michael jackson right yeah you hear that michael jackson. They, yeah right it's about him so yeah. so it's so it's it's unlike any other type of of uh, cultural song phenomenon, sure. That that people identify with, uh, you know, it's sure. unlike, you know, uh, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Right. You think of Paul McCartney, let it be. Right. John Lennon, Ringo Starr, George right. Harrison. It, that's th what you're thinking of. I think that's why it's important to give credit where it's due, in my opinion. Like when you see like uh, creature performers in movies and stuff like that, when you're like, you know, this character, but like that's Andy Serkis, right. you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, there's this thing or like that's Ahmed Best or like these are the people in those suits that you love so much. You know, Admiral yep. Akbar, that's Tim Rose. Ah, uh, yes. Hence, the, hence, hence the popularity of Comic-Cons and the, Absolutely. the characters that appear at Comic-Cons all the time. Absolutely. And hence the, the value of them maybe putting my name at the end of the TV series, so that people yeah. would know. I hence agree. them, I agree. even though they, they didn't, but That's hence true. them maybe maybe allowing the artist of the Pokemon theme to be registered as Jason Page yeah. instead of Pokemon. On my main Pokemon video, when you post a video with the Pokemon theme song, mm -hmm. it uh, when you post a video with a Michael Jackson song, it'll say artist Michael Jackson. Right. Publishing company and then all this, all the publishing companies right there. It's automatically programmed the algorithms of websites and right. how, that's how they distribute the con the, the, the content and, and manage the copyright. Sure. That information is embedded and the information about the Pokemon theme song does not include me as an artist. So uh, thank you for reaching out to me to, of course, you know, at least for your, for, for this reason to give credit where credit is due. It's what I do. And I'm still taking that credit a little tiny bit at a time through rightfully these kinds so. of interviews. Yeah, and rightfully so. To claim so. my rightful place. Boom, <laughs> boom. Look at us. We, we keep finding these ways, Jason. It's right Magic. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So as, so as someone who's been like doing this for a while, do you have like, do you have any advice for somebody who wants to do like as a singer or as someone who wants to get into the jingle game or like doing what you're doing? Um, the advice is adaptation. You oh. must adapt to new environments, new scenarios, and, and self-reliance and adaptation. In the beginning, at least the beginning of my world mm -hmm. of, of getting into the professional session singing world, I already could sing. I'd already been in bands. I knew what I was doing in the studio, but... I didn't, that, that where, where, how can I find the opportunities? Uh, my sure. friend and I made a demo tape of jingles we produced and wrote and created on our own. Oh, cool. They weren't even 30 or 45 seconds. They were just random times. We didn't even think to make them yeah. the same time <laughs> as what a commercial would be. Right. <laughs> we didn't, that wasn't even part of it. We just, sure. them, just however long it was, we made it. Sure. Uh, we put it on a t cassette tape and we started giving it out to people. With Beautiful. saying, hey, Brick House Productions, we are doing jingles. If you need anything, let us know. We yeah. did it on our own for free, put it out there, and then people who wanted to hire us started hiring us. Mm -hmm. Of course, that template is a little different now sure, uh, because you're not on cassette tape. But That's you true. can still do it on your own and put out yeah. the things to the people who are potential employers. So you adapt to the, to the changing uh, recording environment. Which, sure. which at this point allows you to do almost everything you need to do to be a voiceover artist or a jingle singer on a cell phone. Yeah. I have been doing sessions in the past few months on my phone. 
Really? Through a, an app called BandLab. Oh, and cool. And BandLab allows you to download loops, to download license-free things. Uh, you hmm. can you can download tracks. You can download whatever you want. You can create tracks. You can you can plug really? in little keyboard instruments. And this microphone is actually gets plugged in through the phone through USB to wow. get a, a, a very good signal. And you make your own. You're on what? You want to be an opera singer? Dude. Download some opera tracks and start singing opera. Yeah. If you want to be a, a composer, you want to do dubstep, download some dubstep programs, do them on your phone and start sending them out. Make your networks because there's many networks you can join online mm -hmm. to distribute your music all by yourself. Uh, my music is some of my music is distributed by DistroKid, which puts cool. it out to all the platforms. Just like you, you're a blogger. Mm -hmm. You get on one of those distribution platforms and now you're blogging is on tons of places you you basically just do it on your own create your own yeah your own ecosystem now and don't wait for some other people to hire you to do something do yeah. the thing you want to do on your own if you if your whole goal is to just be hired by somebody then find out what it is that that person needs and just make a whole bunch of those things and keep making them till they're so good that that person <laughs> has got to hire you to do it yeah that's uh, great advice, especially in this like environment that we live in now. With the internet, it made the world super small, so you can means, get your signal out there. You don't have to like show up at their door anymore and be like, "Here's a link to my things." Right? There's no excuses anymore. You know? Here's a here's a tape. Here's yeah. a cassette tape <laughs> that literally we're bouncing. You know, the full length of the tape in real time, twenty minutes to bounce a copy to this. Yeah. You gotta walk it up to this jingle house and knock and say, "Hey, here's our thing." You know? I mean, it's really you. That still works. If you can get people in person, that's a that's still oh, a great sure. way to do it because totally. face to face you could give them your your link or your MP3. Let me email you my website yeah. <laughs> right now. Right while we're here, listen to it, you know. That's right. That's right. And you put like a there's that connection as well, face to face. You have that like, oh right, you're not just a name or a thing anymore. You're a person. It it does right. something there. Makes you more memorable. And the online opportunities are just there's a 10 there's a, a million times more online opportunities than oh yeah there are face-to-face 100 -face and there ever were face-to-face -face. so somewhere in there is your are your people your yeah your that you you only need a thousand of them if you've yeah. got a thousand good followers good customers you know then and they're giving you 15 dollars a month for your patreon dude you got fifteen thousand dollars a month Ooh. right there yeah, I mean that's a that's, that's a, a serious good chunk amount. of change. That's, a, that's yeah. a good chunk of change from only a thousand people. Good, uh, true. So you don't need to be the the world renowned famous artist with you know tens of millions of followers in a record company selling millions of albums sure. to make more money than you would have made twenty years ago with that record because you're paying in all that money back to the I, my record deal of my band before the jingle situation, mm -hmm. 1992, 91, 92, was with a band called What's Up. Great that name. Right here, become, it became a TV show after the band. Oh, even better. Uh, faltered. Uh, but we, we were signed by Imago Records, uh, and they gave us, all in all, about a million dollars over the course of a year, half a million dollars in... Uh, album costs and recording costs and then another half a million dollars between uh, keeping us going for that year and severance pay and all kinds of other stuff mm -hmm. that happened and so we made no money off of that, that right that. we just basically spent money had we made money we would be paying back all of that money sure <laughs> because we were dropped we didn't have to pay that money back but right but we basically had a million dollar record deal and was able to distribute that to get two fifty a week per band right. member for you know a couple of years from sure. that, and, and and you could make two fifty a week a lot easier online now right. having two hundred and fifty followers gives you a dollar right. You know? then That's you a good can, point. Then you could with a with a major record deal for a major record company with major producers and major major album budget and major studios hit factory mm -hmm. record plant all these amazing places we were in we our album was produced by bernard edwards who was the producer of uh chic and a, and a whole bunch of other oh right on uh amazing albums uh, robert palmer yeah um 
he did a whole bunch of other great things. He he passed numbers of years after, but just saying, do it your own way, yeah. and you 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 can't fail if you just keep going. I love it. I think it was the best advice you could give to an artist. Just keep doing your thing. Your people will find you. I, I think it's not just artists. It's it's everybody. Everybody yeah. that has a has a a desire to do something, a business, entrepreneurs, or even yeah, even people that want to be wage slaves. Yeah, just keep keep going till you find that Seven Eleven that's going to hire you. Yeah, I agree. But no, I I think it. I think that's great advice. I really do. I think a lot of artists, especially with the context of the internet knowing that now you don't really have an excuse anymore. If you want it, there's platforms for it. Go out and get it. Do your thing. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That is, that, that's a message. I love it. You card collect any Pokemon stuff? Uh, so I was, I'm a big fan of Squirtle. Mm -hmm. I like Squirtle a lot. So I had some Squirtle things here and there. Growing up, I had like all the cards. I was way into it. I was at that age. I was born in 91. Mm -hmm. And so like I was probably eight when I started watching Pokemon, so it was like the perfect, perfect age. Do you have any from the back, any back in the day uh, items yeah. that you not within you preserved, not within arm's reach? But and my dad was one of those people that was like, "This is something." So he bought so many cards <gasps> and has them in binders. Like yes, still, still, yeah. Oh, it's dude, that's great. Phenomenon, like original holographics, and he would have so many of them because you know he was an adult, and so he'd have like three holographic Charizards. And we're his kids, and we're like, Dad, can we have those cards? And he's like, Nope. No. <laughs> Good for <What> him. <laughs> Basically, my past six months have been uh, investing in the Pokemon card collecting communities and Smart. offering, you know, the the autographs on on cards. Smart. Yeah, I've seen those. And, and I've got some. I've got some vintage Squirtles. Oh that, hell that yeah! Some somebody gave me from the you know the not the first set, but. Right, right after the shadow ones. Sure. And I've been signing those, and people are people are. I, I had no idea. Like a comic con, I get it. There's sure. all these people there. They don't know who I am, but I have a big sign, and then they kind of get online. They get autographs from people. Sure. And that's that's one thing. But but what you have on on the in the card collecting groups are people that are transacting with tens of thousands of dollars worth of really valuable merchandise they're building yeah. these trust these trust-based groups that mm -hmm. are policing for, for any you know any any scammers so that these groups can trade these cards and really like capitalize on the value that they've been sitting on and yeah. that's emerging now because of a 25th anniversary and sure logan paul buying a two hundred thousand dollar card and just the idea yeah. that that these collectibles are not going down in value people are understanding that it's a good investment it's easy to manage you put it in a in a climate controlled case and uh and just wait just and wait 25 years later your your four dollars is forty thousand dollars and that's nuts? fucking nuts Jeez. so i'm just sad that i didn't get in or get in yeah. <laughs> earlier on the investment part but yeah. I'm I'm very glad to know these communities now exist. They're very sure. robust. They're really responsive, and they're they're apolitical. There's no politics sure. with Pokemon. It's just sharing value, sharing the imagination, mm -hmm. creating new new products and art based around it, and you know just it it's just really cool. And and it's financially yeah motivated too because people are securing their children's college. Yeah. Tuitions or or their house down payments uh, when they don't want to go to college. Yeah. <laughs> really don't need to do that at this point. That's right. Uh, That's right. But dude, we've been talking for over an hour already. We did it. Look at this. Yes, we have. How long are your podcast normally? Usually about an hour. Oh, there we, you go. We made it. We did this together, Jason. We did it. We did it wow. together. This was so fun. I'm I'm thrilled to be able to just, you know, freestyle like this. Yeah. Said, none of this, let your audience know, none of this has been scripted. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this they know by now. <laughs> it's an improv. It's a complete and total improv. That's right. It's a whole lot of yes ands. <laughs> yes and, yes and. I love it. But dude, before I let you go, I gotta ask, uh, where can people find you online to reiterate my sentiments that you're fantastic? Uh you can find me at jasonpage.com. Love it. Uh if you just do slash shop, you can find all of the nostalgic burst of Pokemon cards right there. Yeah. Uh, my YouTube channel. 
Uh, I'm trying Fantastic. to preserve by eliminating all uh, potentially censorable content. So sure. it'll be up there <laughs> as a pure Pokemon channel. Okay. Um, the rest of my thoughts will be available on podcasts like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In case there's any censorship that happens, it'll be on the blockchain-based uh, platforms. I'm on Minds.com. I'm on Library, L-B-R-Y. Cool. I'm on uh, BitChute. I'm on Steemit. And uh, I think about getting on Float. Oh, there you uh, go. And a, and a couple of other ones that are happening. Uh, I search under my name on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. as well. But the top three, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube are are, uh, are the main places you can find most of the Pokemon content. When you, I love it. When you want to find the more in-depth Jason Page content, you'll have to go to the other platforms. Ooh, one last one. What's your favorite Pokemon? Yeah. Uh, I don't have favorites. Oh, when you have yes, favorites, yes. you limit yourself. You limit yourself. Ooh, it's like good saying, point. Oh, I only like apple. My apples are my favorite fruit. And then you miss all of the other min the minerals and the vitamins from all the other things. So that's a good answer. I, I have experiences, not favorites. Okay. I like that. I like that. It's a very, it's a very solid answer. I'll allow it. it. I'll allow <laughs> it because we're friends. There we go. <laughs> yes, hey. yes. Let's do this again. You know, Anytime. on your next in your next uh when you when you get that next platform and things happen, done. We need more things to share. I'm I'm back for you, bro. Yeah, you. I love it. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.